all right so look um this was actually heavily requested before i seen it um requested a few times but once again my man energy over here on on um twitch with me right now and he's been giving me bangers to do all day so he told me to do this career criminal on how he survived um getting shot in the face so we about to get into this joint man we about to see what bro got to talk about i already see his dip looking looking crazy over there you know what i'm saying i ain't J jokes jokes anyway man we about to get into this make sure you sub to the channel make sure you like this video let's get it i actually thought he was gonna walk off and i see him look at me and he, he had a fault and now i know what the fault was i've got to kill him and he just walked up to me and he just went bang bang straight in the head <laughs> My childhood was just feral, I'd say. It was just a normal, average childhood being brought up, beaten, battered, abused, neglected, and abandoned, really. Well, how do you say that that's a regular childhood, bro? That's not regular. I don't know. They beat the, the, the shit out you to the point that you think that shit is regular, and it's not. Beaten, abused, all that. What? Boy, no, it's not regular. Beaten, battered, abused, neglected, and abandoned, really. Sort of opening fridges and cupboards and there's no food, getting bread out of the thing and it's all mouldy. You know, like, thinking, why can't, my, why can't my mum be like everybody else? Why can't we be like everybody else? And that's why I was always brought up early, up until about 11, that I had that mindset. Why can't we be like everybody else? Why have we got to go with that? Why don't we eat the same stuff? Why don't we buy the same stuff? Why, why is this? Why is that? So I was very confused growing up as a kid. When you look back at that now, why do you think you could, you're, it wasn't like everyone else? Was it just lack of money or was it just your mum and dad were in a different situation? Well, um, <laughs> hey, what's wrong with dude? Obviously, I know my dad, my, I've seen my dad in my house. They're, 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 there's, there's mounds of money. There's mounds of drugs. There's 20, 30 people in my house doing packaging up gear, packaging up money. Like these are things I see as a baby, right? So I know everyone's crooked. I know my dad's dodgy. I've seen guns in my house. Like we're not stupid, we know. I know my dad's no good. And my mum's always high. Like I used to go shopping with my mum and I used to put clothes on, put jackets on. My mum used to say, wait outside with this. Like look, fill up a bag and it's all right, go and wait outside me. I'll be out in a minute. Like, and you know what they're doing, and I just thought everyone done this shoplifting and thieving shit. So I've been caught shoplifting by a store detective. They've took me home to my dad, and basically when we've come home, the man's knocked on the door, he's gone, oh, we caught your son shoplifting, um, we don't want to do it again, we'll phone the police. My dad's punched me in the face, dragged me in the house, the geezer's even gone, oh, mate, mate, calm down, calm down. And I remember him saying, calm down, calm down. My dad's then, got rid of the store detectives, and then he's dragged me down the fucking passageway, and then he dragged me into the kitchen and just turned on the fucking fire, the gas fire, and then just burnt my hand. Like, and I'm thinking, <laughs> I love you, you love me, why are you burning my hand? Like, what are you doing? Like, why, dad, dad, please, please, please. In my head, I'm screaming, screaming, screaming. Physically, I'm screaming, please, dad, please. And he's burning, I can smell it, you can see it. And I'm thinking, Oh, hell no. Nah. No wonder this dude all wild. He don't need jail. He need a mental institution. He said you could smell it. Well, I mean, you was stealing, but this ain't the motherfucking third world countries where you could be doing shit like that to people, especially not no damn kids. And he said he's seen you stealing. Wow! And then he beat me with a belt, and then he took me back into the kitchen and made me heat two massive spoons of Econ hot pepper sauce and told me if I have a fever again, I'll be getting twice as much. And I went in my bedroom that night and I cried and I sobbed and I thought, why would my dad do that to me? Like, why would my dad do that to me? Like, why would you do that to me? I just, I just, I just, I just uh, you can't. <laughs> yeah. Right. Oh, 
holy shit, this dude. He he's still hurting. I, I'm done laughing. This ain't funny, man. I'm done laughing. He's still he's still hurt. This is tragic. You can like, oh man. <laughs> Alright, that was the last laugh. Dad, do that to me. Why would you do that to me? I'm just you can't. Yeah. Right. Fucking show you. I'll show you. And that was it. From that point, I just, I had no respect for anybody after that point. Like, and it was just, I'm never gonna be like you. I'm never gonna listen to you. I'm never gonna do what you want. You're never gonna hurt me. And that was uh, eight years of age. I never understood why I got all the beats. I never understood any of it all my life. And I just grew up with a real deep hatred towards anything and everybody. Eve Online on Mac immerses you in a universe with thousands of star systems like never before. When did you start then dabbling in criminal activity? My dad had had my house. Boy, he said he's jokes. Yeah, this boy's jokes, man. Yeah, my mum's house. And in the front room, there would be a mound. And I'm talking like from that wall to that wall, like a mound, a mound of weed, a little stack of ash. And then they'd be sitting there, putting in five pound drawers, little strips, loads of strips, loads of strips, loads of strips, loads of bags, loads of bags. And they'd put them in little, in, in little packs and then packs would go into black bags, the black bags. And then basically what, I used to nick them all, right? Because they don't, I used to think, F they're never gonna know these are missing. So when they're turning up and the people say, no, that was light. I never got that. This was, this was having arguments. So my dad's come back to my mum's. He knows it. I know it's you. It's got to be you. It's got to be you. You fucking, I can hear him upstairs. And, I'm, I'm, and he's beating my mum, beating my mum. But I'm sitting in a room with, I can't remember who's three or four of my mates. But this path that my mum's getting beaten for, we're all selling. Do you know what I mean? We're all selling it. Like, what the f***? Like, we need to, sort, we'd, come on man, let's stop, let's stop him. And they're like, Marv, it's your dad. I was like, so what? He's beating my mum, we've got the puff, bruv. And they're like, oh, uh, what are we gonna do? And I was like, F and there was a bayonet, a, a big bayonet in my room. So I picked the bayonet, I said, I've got a fucking bayonet. So I run down the stairs, I run it through the kitchen door and put the blade right up to his nose. He's fucking touch her again, I'll kill you, you c And he's like, put his head back. But when I see him put his head back, I thought, oh, he hit himself. So I pushed him like that and he's gone, Move backwards, I thought, yeah, yeah, get out of my house, you mug. Get out of my house. And I sort of edged him round and he sort of walked backwards. And I'm thinking, wow, he's a mug, he's a mug. Come on, get out, get out of my house, you can't get out. So you come back here, I'll kill you stone dead, you mug. Now, f off. And then my mum's like, son, son, I said, no, he can't come back here. And then he's gone, never said a word and went. So now I'm thinking, what do I do? What do I, I've got to let him know. I've got to let him know. He can't come back here. So I said to my pal, will you drive me up there? Because I weren't driving then. I could drive, but only in first and second gear. I didn't know about third and fourth, because I was only really young. So I said, will you drive me up there? Because it was a bit of a way away, Willsden from Kilburn, in a car, going, rah, rah, you're going to get a stop. Right? <laughs> but, but, but long distances, my mates drove me. Short distances, I used to nick little cars and go first gear and second gear. But my mates drove me I said, right, it, we've got to go. They said, what are you going to do? I said, I'll, I'll, put this in my dad's face, mate, in front of his mates. He said, for what? I said, just let him know he can't come back to my ass, bruv. I'll fucking blow his head off, mate. And they're like, Marv, you're mad, mate. You're out, you're <laughs> like, everyone's trying to talk me out of this stuff. Like, everyone's always trying to talk me out. And I'm like, nah, it's happening. I don't give a fuck, bruv, yeah? I've run him out of the ass, he can't come back. Now he needs to know I'm the man of this ass now. Come and let's go. So we got in the car, drive over there. And I've walked in. And I was just, my dad's sitting around the table playing Kaluki with his mates. And I was walked in and he, no, he went, all right, son. And I never said nothing. And I walked behind him and he went, are you all right, son? And I just come there and I back the thing. I said, no, I'm not all right, dad. I'm not all right. Yeah. And I said, I will be all right once you stop coming to my fucking house, though. And he's like, what are you talking about? I said, you got to stop coming to my house. Do you understand me? And one of his mates has started like, I don't know whether he thought it was a joke or not, but he's made it. I can't remember exactly what he said, but he said something to my dad. And I just, I said, see you, you fucking cunt. Say one more word, I'll blow your fucking lips off, mate. And then the whole room just went quiet. And my dad said, please, son, please, son. 
I was like, please, please, after what you've done to my fucking mum, yeah? Don't ever come back to my house. Do you understand me, mate? And he was like, okay, okay. And that was it. I would come out, went downstairs, got in the car, and went about my business. But that's me becoming a man. What's that moment you cry? How was you becoming a man kicking your dad out, though? <laughs> I was 16. Yeah, 16 or 17 years of age it was. Um, basically, it's, we've had a little bit of conflict in our area. Right? So someone's bought a couple of E's off one of me mates. These E's was a little bit trippy, right? So after these geese have gone out, took their E's, got buzzing, got out and up, tripped out a little bit, they've come back and said they want their money back. My mate's like, for what? It was like, that was a bit trippy. My mate's like, I was like, oh, piss off, you fucking idiot. They're trippy pills, what do you want me to do? Cut a long story short, they beat my mate up. My mate's trying to retaliate, got beat up again. So I'm driving down Haverstock Hill, and on the right hand, and right hand side of Haverstock Hill, there used to be a, a well, it's, a, it's a theatre now, it used to be the Roundhouse Theatre. I'm driving past, I've seen an old friend, they've flagged me down, Marv, 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 <laughs> all them lot are in there. How many? So he said, seven or eight. I said, sweet, 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 I'll be back in a minute. Run to the phone box, run my mate, he's at home. I said, right, stay in, I'll be back. Boom, flew around his house, said, right, where's the ammonia? So he's got a bottle of ammonia, he's got a big blade and a baseball bat. I said, right, let's go. I've got one skinny little mate and one short little mate, two little white kids. So when we've gone in this, um, the round house, I've located a little firm, so there's seven or eight of them in the back corner. So I've said, like, back in the day, you used to wear bandanas and mad hats. So I've said to one of my mates, Mick, you wear this, you wear that, and you slip over. When you're there, let me know, because this used to mean that's sweet. That's, that, that sign there, that's just sweet. So back, backwards is sweet, forwards is on top. That's it's on top, nit, nit, nit. Backwards means sweet. So I said, Give me. <laughs> These boys that had gangster codes and come on, nigga, come on. Hey, what's wrong with them? What's good, Jay? How you feeling, Brody? Give us the sign, so it's just sweet. So he's gone over there, he's give us the sign. So now I'm coming. So I said, when you see me coming, you just start doing them all with ammonia. Once you've done them with ammonia, I'll put the ones down on the floor with the bat that we want. And then me other little mate, Ginwell, yeah, Ginwell's come in and just done all the main ones that we needed to do, right? And then we asked them, do you want to end it? Do you want to end it? And like, please, 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 please. It's done, yeah? It's done, it's done. Now we're, we're, we've done the firm, we've done them, we've done them, we've done a lot of them, mate. We've done them all. <laughs> done them, put them on the floor, plunge them up there, done. So now we're buzzing. We're the governors of the little manor now. Can you just list off some of the things you were doing? What were the kind of activities you were doing? Bro, he was nuts, bro. Like, we just gonna leave it at he's nuts. I've been under investigation, I think, for 24... 24 murders, um, seven or eight. Hold on, we're winding that back. He been on, on investigation for what many, 20 what? What, what? 24 murders, um, seven or eight shootings, and maybe f 30, 40 armed robberies. I've been under investigation for, I've had observations put on me for years, for years, and for years, I got arrested for lots, I got punished for lots, and I got away with lots. Once I went over 30, it was just another level, it was just another level. Like when we started doing 30, 35, when we started doing all the drugs and things like that, it's, it's unreal. It, it, it's unreal, but then, there are two types of lizard or reptilian kind of being. My boy said proper screws loose. <laughs> hey, bro. <laughs> proper screws loose is wild. <laughs> That's exactly what it is, though. Screws gone. Yeah, he definitely act like a little hyper ass little kid. Look at his face, he like. <laughs> the backstabbing, sneaking, cheating, robbing, conniving. Ro ah. 
that there's lots of money out there to be earned, but then there's millions of rat bags, snake f**ks that will rob you, sell you, shoot you, kill you, bury you, and they will do it, and they're, they're your closest people. Yeah, your closest people are the only people that can damage you. So your closest friends will rob you. They'll set you up to get robbed. They'll set you up to get killed. You know I, mean? I know three major gangsters, gangsters, right? Major gangsters that have killed their partners to take over their graft. West London, they're famous for killing their elders. Do you know what I mean? And taking their parcels. And everybody knows who I'm talking about. Do you know what I'm saying, John? But they're famous for it. They've done it in North London as well and West London. And they've done it. They iron out their people to take their bits. Do you know what I'm saying? So you're not safe even by the people you grow with. What's the closest you've been to, to death? I used to have a driver who used to drive me about everywhere and pick me up, drop me off, pick me up, drop me off, drive me all around the place. And I used to give him a percentage of stuff I used to make. So if I made money, my driver would get a percentage of what I made just for being there and driving me about. Anyway, I've took me to drive around my mate's house one day. Um, and my mate, because I used to be, uh, I used to have all the watches in the world. So I've gone to my mate's house, he's got a load of watches. Mom, do you want this? I said, no, I'm all right for watches in a minute. So my driver said, I want one. Can I get one? So my mate said, is he all right? I said, yeah, he's sweet as a nut. I pay his wages. Get him over once. Monday's come, he's been giving his money. I naturally assume he's gone and paid my mate for the watch, going about a business. A couple of things have happened. About a month later, my mate's rung me up and said, hello, Marv, what's happening, son? I said, I'm all right, mate, you? He said, yeah, he said, I'm a little bit disappointed, Marv. I said, why is that? He said, uh, I was just wondering if you're gonna be paying for that watch anytime soon. Well, ain't he paid for that? Cheeky c hmm. Hello, mate? Listen, you need to go around and pay for that watch, mate, I was gonna punch your f***ing head in, you little <laughs> Go and pay for the watch. What's the matter with you? What, what, you think, because we're not having it? You think- <laughs> He said he was gonna punch his head in, though. <laughs> Hey, bro. Hey, who said he was animated? Hey, that was a bullseye comment. You cannot pay for the watch. Go and pay for the watch. I'll punch your fing head in, you little. Prick. He's, What's he got to do with you? What? What do you mean, you cheeky? C it's my pal's watch. Take it back. Otherwise, I'm going to punch your fing head in. He said, It's got nothing to do with you. Why are you getting involved? I said, Right, you little. C where are you? Where are you? He said, I'm down Port Banus. I said, I'll be down in a minute. So I've jumped in the mower. And the ironic thing about it, I had a 357 Magnum on me. I took it out, I said to me nephew, hold on to that, I'll be back in a minute. He said, where are you going? I said, down the port, I've got to slap this f***ing head in. So I've jumped in my... Boy, put his heat down to go think he about to just bitch somebody. That's where people be fucking up. You think you just some big bad bully. Should have took your gun. <laughs> Nigga was ready. <laughs> Facts. Blew down there. As I pulled up, got out of the car, he's not there. So I've seen his mate. I said, where's your pal? He said, we well, ain't here, mate. I said, I know he ain't f***ing here. Where is he? He's going to be back in a minute. So I've naturally assumed he's gone to get a tool. Sweet, not a problem. I think I'll sit down away with you then, I said, you know what this little mug's all about? I said, because he owes me money. Did he tell you he owes me money? He said, well, no, he never. W what for? I said, for a f***ing watch, mate. He said, you know what, mate? Why don't you go home and I'll bring him up to the gym tomorrow? I said, no, because if he's going to get a f***ing tool, he can use it when he comes back, the mug. Right? He said, no, no, go, go. And I, I said, no, f*** that. If he's got a tool, he's got to use it when he comes back to and I'll punch his f***ing head in. With that, in comes Mark. So he's come walking up, so I've seen him, I've jumped up. I said, come on then, let's go, mate. Right, and he's like, he showed me a gun. I was like, what on earth are you going to do with that? <laughs> so now I've walked away from him. I've seen the gun, so I've turned around now. In my head, I've just got to get close enough to grab the gun off him because I didn't believe he would shoot me. I just believed he would wave it about, scream and shout, maybe try pistol whip me or do something. So I thought, as long as I can get close to him, I can grab hold of him, I'll just smash his f***ing head in and shoot the f***. Right, so I'm thinking, get close to him. As I got, i say, two or three arms away from him, he's pulled the gun out. So I've looking him in the eyes. So I'm just walking towards him. I said, mate, if you've come to use it, do what you come to do, bruv. Yeah? And I didn't think he'd do it. I thought I'd get... I was maybe three steps away from grabbing the gun and I took two steps and he shot me in this leg. And as he shot me in this leg, it just disintegrated and I've hit the deck. And then basically, when he's hit me in the leg, I thought, you fucking mug. Obviously, you're angry, you can't, you fucking do your job, you mug. And he's walked over me, he's done me again. And then he's done me again. And it was after the third shot that I thought to myself, do you know what? Doug Mastriano scares me. My body, my choice. <laughs> it wasn't until the time you did third shot 
that you decided to shut the fuck up? Hey, something is wrong with you, my friend. Fuck wrong with this boy. This is ridiculous nonsense. Mastriano would make all abortion illegal. Even in cases of rape or incest. Even to protect the life of the mother. Doug Mastriano is too extreme on abortion. Bang, bang, fam. What's the deal, bro, bro? Carl, why doesn't NJM use mascots? Mascots are silly. Saving money isn't. You think I'm silly? Hidden pot of gems uh, for me. Hell yeah. You said this year? All right, bet. Bet. We just did the first 12 songs on the Pot of Paper Training Day 3 album, too. But hold on. Let me get back to this shit. This nigga funny. Again. And it was after the third shot that I thought to myself, did I what? Keep your mouth shut, son. Yeah. Keep your mouth shut. Say nothing. Say nothing. And then I actually thought he was going to walk off. And I see him look at me. And he, he had a fault. And now I know what the fault was. He said, this is going to kill me. I've got to kill him. And he just walked up to me and he just went, bang, bang, straight in the head. But the first one, as my head's gone back, I thought, oh my God, this just shot me in the face. Mm -hmm. I can't believe it. I'm going to die. And I thought, how come I can still hear something? And I've opened my eye and I thought, wow. And I've seen the, the barrel of the gun and I thought, what the f And then I'll just see the bullet coming towards me. And that's when I've heard the bang. And I was like, oh my God, this no way can he kill me. I'm two weeks old. He's got his belly button pierced. He's got his nipple pierced. He's got his tongue pierced. How the can I get killed by this? <laughs> hey, yo. Ain't no fucking way. I, I, feel, I, feel, I feel him on that, though. I'm not letting no nigga with a belly ring kill me, bruh. He said nipple in they bro. That is funny as fuck. Hell no, he can't take you out, bruv. He's got his belly button pierced. He's got his nipple pierced. He's got his tongue pierced. How the f can I get killed by this c <laughs> Bang. And then I've heard footsteps running off, and I was like, <sighs> gone like that. My knob is just splattered all over my pants, like my leg. Like, there was no blood, like f in blood, but. It was just all fleshy, like everything was just flesh open. And I was like, wow. For some reason, I thought I was gonna go into shock. So I'm breathing, 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 breathing. I'm on the phone. Right, listen, silly b she's done me, you know. I don't know how many times done me, mate. Because when a gun fires, it makes two boom, 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 boom for one shot. So I said, I don't know how many times you shot me. You shot me a few times, mate. I don't know. He said, but he shot me in my face, in my face, in my face. I can't feel my face, I can't feel my face. I don't know how many times he shot me, mate. So there's one bullet hole there, and then one right in the eye. And the inside of my eye, you can see, I've still got my retina, and I've still got my optic nerve, and you can see it all moving at the back, because the bullet stopped halfway through my eye, and they don't know what stopped it. And it flattened, flat as a pancake. So I mean, my femoral artery got punted in three places, I never bled. They told me I'll never walk again. First, I actually thought I was dead. And then I've heard someone say, Marvin, is that you? And I literally, Please believe me, I literally thought I was in heaven. And I thought, No, I'll try to ring an ambulance. What's happened? I said, I've been shot. Okay, where? I said, right, I got twice, or once in the leg, once in my groin, once in my arm, and twice in my head. Silence. Hung up. Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> I've done this three times before the police had to ring them back. I'm saying, no, 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 it's true, it's true, it's true. <laughs> they thought that they thought that man was bullshit. Like, if, it, if somebody called you and said, "Hey, I got shot," oh, for real? Um, you okay? Where, where you get shot at? My leg, my groin, twice in my arm, my stomach, and twice in my head. And you called me? <laughs> How? I hung up on your ass too, man. Quit playing on the phone. People really need emergencies and shit. Don't be calling 911 on some jokes, man. I done hung up on your ass too. You had all this risk, but what was the thing that made you go straight? A lot of my youngsters, right, I used to groom them so they made money for me. If I paid 15 grand for something, but I could sell it for 30 grand in this country, then I'd give it to my youngsters for 17,000. 
So the transport gets paid, the storage gets paid, and then they make the money. I don't make the money. Do you understand? But they've got to return the money to buy the product. Right, so this kid, he's getting his money, getting his, but he owes hundreds of thousands of pounds. And I'm thinking, how? 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 How could he owe this much money? Like, it don't make sense. It was as simple as this little <laughs> taking a piss, shoot him. Simple. Right, listen, do me a favour. I need you to go and light someone up for me. Where? Well, I don't want him dead. Just f***ing do his legs. Nothing above the waist. Four or five. Sweet, not a problem. Where's he from? Kentish Town. Shut up. Oh, do me a favour, please. Make sure you find out who he is before you do anything. Ping, 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 ping. Hello, mate. What's happening? <laughs> oh, you never guess what. What's... He said ping, 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 ping. <laughs> Dude's weird, man. Dude's wild. So, see that fella, yeah? What fella? The geese you've asked me to find, yeah? He's only best mates with your son, your dame. I was like, what? What the f? He said, yeah, his pals have been me now. I was like, damn. So I rang my son, do you know this fella? He said, yeah. I said, can you get me his number? He said, yeah. So I rang him up. I said, right, you need to come and see me, G. Come and see me. I said, look, no disrespect, G, but that money you owe, yeah? I don't know, I don't know no money. I said, yes, you do. He said, no, I don't. I went, ping, 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 ping. I said, yes, you do. And it's me. And he's like, Arr. I said, right, I'm going to do you a favour. I said, because I can't do this no more. I said, I'm hurting and damaging and killing youngsters, mate. It can't happen. So I'm going to give you an opportunity, yeah? I'm coming off the road today, right now. I'm coming off. I'm not doing this graph no more at all. If you don't want to pay me back that money, yeah? Come off the road with me today. If you want to pay me back, then I'm going to sell that debt to somebody that you won't like. And they won't be as lean with me and they will hurt you. And he said, well, what am I going to do? I said, oh. bro, y'all could sell debt over there. Like if, look, I want out, but look, I sell you this debt. You could get, you got to pay him now. Bro, what, no, I owe you. I'm not paying nobody else. What is that even about? I don't know what you're going to do. I said, but I'm coming off the road today and I'm going to the gym for the next six months and I guarantee something else will turn around. He's gone off. He's developed a music um, platform, recording studio, record label. Now he's got four or five artists under him turning over just under a million pound a year. Do you understand? I'm an advocate against crime, a mentor, peer mentor, motivational speaker, personal trainer, personal coach and life speaking life coach. Yeah, that was the turning point into what we do. And now we're going to schools, colleges and prisons. And I just sort of ask the kids, for what? What are you doing? Why are you doing it? Where's your role? Where's your game? Where's your goal? Like, what's your objective? You've, you've turned your life around. Uh, you've gone, you're, you're, you're trying to help people. He talking about, uh, oh, he talking about Charlie Sloth in, this, in that part. Oh, that was, that's crazy. So he saved him basically and, oh. Make a lot of sense. No, no, I'm not trying to help people. Yeah, you are I'm helping everybody. Like, I'm helping everybody I come into contact with. And there's no trying. I do what I do. Do you look back on your life of crime and regret it? <sighs> See, I do and I don't, right? Because... One of the things I tell young men, well, and young women as well, but the young men really need to hear this more, I think. I regret the choices that I made, and I, I regret the loyalty that I give. I regret sacrificing for so many scumbags, because the thing that these youngsters have got to understand is, all these people you, do, that tell you they love you, yeah? I love you, cuz, fam, fam. They don't fucking love you. That's the thing. And when you get older, you'll realize, but the one thing I regret, is supporting, loving, and sacrificing for the scumbag grooming shit bags. Because that's all they are. Shit bag grooming, nonsense. Like, how the f could you give a 14 year old kid a gun? Like, what the f? Like, I get angry <laughs> with these fuckers. Do you know what I'm saying to you? Like, it's, you just think. I take accountability for what I've done because I wanted to be the baddest villain on the planet. When I walked anywhere, people said, do you know who that is? That's nothing. And when I turned around, people put their heads down. Do you know what I mean? That was my buzz. I, I was so egotistical, and, and no matter how hard you was, but if they ever owed me money, they even they'd tell you. 
I'd f them up. Do you know? Do you regret the 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 hurt and the pain that the I suffered others, made others suffer, yeah. Because, this is the irony of that, right, that I regret everything I'd done, even shooting some people. After I'd done it, I'd be like, damn, that was a liberty, they didn't even deserve that. F it, they chose this life, that's the life. That's the <laughs> life, it's the life. So I always put everything down, I always felt bad, I felt bad, even be, look, People out there that are watching this now know, yeah? You know I've apologised to you. You know I've come to your house. You know I've, I've begged forgiveness of you. Yeah, you know this. Because every single person I've done something to, I've gone back to them and said, look, I, I never meant to do that. Even one of the worst, the last shooting I was investigated for, I've actually spoke to the kid that was involved in the shooting and tried to rectify the relationship and rebuild from a different place as two different people. How are you going to re like Bill with a victim, nigga. <laughs> what? What? He was very forgiving, and it was nice. And he was. And he, I said, look, I've really got to apologise, mate. He said, Marv, mate, we was all fucking lunatics back then, bruv. He said, come on, mate. If I'd have got you, I'd have got you, mate. He said, you just got me first, bruv. And I was like, nah, it ain't a, you don't know this and you don't know. He said, Marv, it don't fucking matter, mate. We was all lunatics, we was all wild. You cop for me, they cop for me. This happened, that happened, what the f He said, why do you feel about the geezer that shot you? I said, ah, oh, I feel sorry for him, mate. He said, but that's how I feel. Don't, don't drive yourself mad. Do you know what I mean? Because I actually feel sorry for the kid that shot me because he'll never be at peace. Yeah. Thinking I'm coming for him, you know? But you're happy, you don't want to get into it, like, you're in a happy place. Uh, mate, I'm, I'm a, listen, I'm happy when I get mail, right? I'm happy that I'm registered at a house. I'm happy that I'll get mail. I'm happy that I've paid taxes. I'm happy that I'm gonna leave here, get in my car, and I'm gonna drive, and I don't have to worry about blue lights. When I hear a siren, I don't even look anymore. Do you understand? Like, I've got, I'm free, I'm free. I'm free, and there is no better feeling on this planet than being free. You talking to a motherfucking career criminal, man. And this boy is explaining to you all of the brutality, gruesome, and all of that shit. Tell you he feeling bad while doing it. And then being free at the end is like a slap, into the, a slap in the face to all the victims out there, man. For real. Like, he was buck wild. He still got little short-tempered, angered little issues that he... Seemed like he spurts he was going through during the interview. Like, dude, dude is a little bit special. Uh, I don't know, but that was a dope story, though. I'm glad whenever I see at the end that a lot of them be getting their life together. And nobody deserved to be in jail for the rest of their life. Um, chance, people get chance after chance. Now, I think you should get chance after chance. Um, not chance after chance, but at least a chance. Um, especially whenever it don't got nothing to do with some kids or minors or, you know, sexual assault and shit like that. Other than that, I think you should get another chance. Real shit. But, um, dope story, man. Dope story. I was, I was fucking with that. Let me know what y'all think in the comments. Make sure you sub to the channel. Make sure you like the video. If you with me on Twitch, what's good, gang? But nah, we about to get up out of here, though. I got a few other things that I got to do today. It was definitely, definitely, definitely dope back rocking with the live streams man make sure that y'all tune in i know we're gonna be doing it this friday it's not gonna be every monday wednesday and friday anymore i'm gonna take that down it's just gonna be whenever i could whenever i get an hour or two i'm just gonna get on live so just make sure that your notifications is on so these is gonna be spurred a moment until i get a real strict schedule and i ain't gonna do that so i ain't tied into nothing so just make sure that you got the notifications on i'm gonna see y'all boys on friday though for sure Go ahead, you know what I'm saying, you know what I'm saying?